Good evening, everyone. Welcome to WIN, Wellness, Integrating Needs. I'm your mistress of ceremonies this evening. My name is Brenda Jones. And once again, we'd like to welcome you. And we're proud to present uh, this eight-part series to you uh, in terms of helping you to live a healthy life. Some of the things that I'd like to just take a few minutes to review with you, uh, we've already had two sessions, and I think that they have been extremely exciting and very, very interesting. The first session talked about sunlight. Is it in you? And I think those of you that were here last week, uh, hope in a hopeless world, I left here very, very inspired. It was an extremely inspirational uh, time last, uh, last week. Tonight, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. And I would encourage all of you, if you've not been here before, this is your first time being here, I know uh, that you're going to leave here with information, with more knowledge, and I think enthusiasm for taking care of yourself. When I think about um, Dr. Youngberg, and I was trying to think of some words that would describe him, and I thought about passionate, informative, energetic, and enthusiastic. And I think you can see very clearly that he's passionate about helping all of us to look in terms of our holistically spiritual, our physical, uh, and also our emotional well-being. It is my pleasure to introduce you tonight to Dr. Wes Youngberg, and let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you, Brenda. Do you believe that there's actually a time for healing? Is it, is it possible that there's even a special timing that impacts and influences healing in a special way? There's a, there's a whole new science of chronobiology that's it's impacting every aspect of medical care if we're paying attention. Is it possible that there is a chronicity to healing? A synchronicity to healing where many factors come together to influence whether or not what we're doing is actually going to help us in the healing process. There's so many therapeutic modalities out there today that are available to us and healing. And yet, for some people, those modalities work very well, and yet for other people, they don't seem to work that well. What makes the difference? Is it possible that there's this special synchronicity that if absent, prevents the healing process from taking place? And if there is a synchronicity, what, what are the elements and what in particular are the key elements that are required to be present in order for the healing process to move forward? Regardless of what we're thinking about, whatever type of healing that we're searching for tonight, this is a critical concept to consider. And it's best-selling books, Roald Dahl, whose grandparents came from Norway, and I think this is one of the few similarities that I have with this author, he talks about his father and brother, who at a young age aspired to build a fortune overseas, and they left the small rural towns of Norway jumped the ship against their father's wishes and found themselves in Paris. At which point, after a few weeks, they separated ways and each of them became independently wealthy by applying what they had learned from their father during their formative years. Both of them independently developed a powerful interest in beautiful things. In fact, as they earned money, they would buy expensive paintings and put them in their homes. They would go to auctions and find, find uh, wonderful furnishings, antiques. 
They loved beautiful things. In fact, Dahl's grandfather or father himself uh, took a keen interest in gardening and, and loved to go and find special alpine plants that he collected. There was a curious theory that his father held about how to develop a sense of beauty in the minds of his children. Whenever his um, wife became pregnant, Dahl's father would wait until about the third trimester, and then he would announce, he would say, it's time for the glorious walks to begin. By this, he meant that he would take her to places of great beauty. In fact, he would spend an hour every day walking with her through the hills and the valleys, helping her to absorb the splendor and the majesty of nature. In fact, his theory was that if the eye of a pregnant woman was constantly observing the beauty of nature, that this beauty would somehow be transmitted to the mind of the unborn baby that was developing in her womb. And that that baby would then grow up to be a lover of beautiful things. Wow. Ah, but you say, that's just, <laughs> that's just feel-good fairy tales. There's, there's no science that, that, that could possibly be of any benefit to a baby. Is there? She determined that we are very interested in fetal programming. She's British. Which says how we are born as a baby sets us up for future health. There's a whole science now dedicated to understanding how what happens during the gestational period influences us later in life. And so there's something about fetal programming. There's something about genetic changes or expressions that are occurring and being activating during key developmental phases in our life. In fact, this is also happening in an alarming way in our children. You see, all through the developmental years, our children are activating one gene after another. Dr. Furman, who's a family physician and uh, a self-taught nutritionist, has now written three best-selling books in the area of nutritional medicine. His latest one is Eat for Health, which is a powerful book showing people how we can actually reverse chronic disease by applying the principles of reprogramming our genes. In his second book called Disease Proof Your Children, he, he discusses research that shows that our risk of developing cancer after the age of 50 is nearly 80% established before the age of 10. Now, there's always opportunity to re-engineer our genes. There's always the opportunity to change that risk, but the most powerful times of genetic expression and setting the software of our genes into motion are during key developmental phases in our life. We need to pay attention to those. There is a time, there is a chronicity to healing and disease, and there certainly is a synchronicity, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Could it be that what we're thinking, what is going on in our minds has an even more powerful influence on fetal programming, on the developmental process as we age, than even the foods that we take into our mouth or the type of liquids that we consume? I'd like to suggest to you that it does. It does. 